bunch of lawyers. Joining me, David Windichier and Robert Schalk. Uh, also with me, Philip Holloway, joining me out of the courthouse. You know, you would think, David Lee Windichier, that he would at least use cases where the person had been innocent. All right, had been found not guilty, like O.J. Simpson, Robert Blake, maybe, Casey Anthony. But he chose cases uh, where the people were found guilty. Do you think, to you, Windichur, he's going to revisit this, that the judge is going to close the courtroom so nobody will know what's going on? He's going to have to retry because that's going to be an impartial jury no matter what. Everybody in that community knows about the case. It's going to excite their emotions to be sympathetic about the baby dying. And it's going to be unfortunate. He's not going to be able to get an impartial but jury. He's going to have to not, change venue. That's not the standard. Philip Holloway isn't the standard. Not a juror that has never heard of the case, but a juror that swears under oath that they can hear the facts and evidence and render a verdict that speaks the truth. Isn't that true? And that's exactly what the lawyers for the media, Nancy, argued in their opposition to this motion. They said, look, you know, Judge, uh, right. the parties can closely question all the potential jurors. They can do a thorough and sifting voir dire uh, during jury selection. There are other alternatives other than the drastic measure of closing the courtroom in violation of the First Amendment. Now, Nancy, to be fair about it, there is precedent of foreclosing of the courtroom, but the bar is very, very high to meet constitutional standards because the public has well, a First Amendment interest and knowing what's going on in the courtroom. And of course, the defendant has a right to a fair trial. And those are the two competing legal interests. And to Philip Holloway, former police officer, former prosecutor, also in court today to see all of this unfold. There's a lot more to it than, the, than those bare bones facts. Mike Duffy is absolutely correct, but there's more to it. What else do you see is critical to the state's argument? Well, Nancy, as you know, all we saw at the probable cause hearing last summer was just a preview of what the state's evidence was at that time. There was a lot of things that were developed since then. We have seen literally reams and reams and reams of information passed to the defense in the form of pre-trial discovery materials. What is contained in those materials is what we don't know yet, and that's what will be developed during these motions hearings as they play themselves out in court well, and ultimately at trial. So we really don't know what the rest of the well, story is, thing, but we will find out. I know one thing. Lindsay, are you still with me? Doesn't, uh, doesn't Justin Ross Harris at lunch...